Thanks for joining us once again for your update from the City of New Hope, joined by the Mayor Kathy Hempkin here on October 7th to give you an update of what's going on in the city. Welcome, Mayor. How are you today? Well, I'm just fine. I have to tell you, the golf course is starting to look like the picture behind me. It's Mm. really, really pretty out there. Yep, it is that fall season. We'll talk a little bit about some of the things that happen in fall and park and rec in just a few minutes. But let's begin with something else that happens in fall, maybe not outside, but inside. It's the election. What is the latest update on the election process? Well, you know, election day comes and goes, and it's only one day. But if you would like, you can go into City Hall and vote early. So they, you'll get an absentee ballot. You have to fill out a little form. It takes about five minutes. You can vote there at City Hall, and you can do that Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. If you want to vote at the normal polling place, that's just fine. But if you're going to be gone or you just don't want to wait in line or you just want to do it, uh, go to City Hall between uh, 8 and 4.30, and you can vote there. Bring your ID, though. They need to, to see an address and a picture ID. All right, let's move ahead to community development. A lot happening here, as always. First, we're going to touch on the Ray of Awards. We talked a lot about them as we were getting up to the time of nominations coming in. Now we're through the process, and it's about time to give out some awards, I understand. Well, the Ray of Award is given out to people that go just a little bit above and beyond to make the houses look nice on the outside. Uh, they, they, don't, they do some on the inside, but mostly it's on the outside. So it's called Ray Those have all been submitted. The inspectors have gone out to look at them. Uh, They have engraved the rocks, and we'll be giving those out in October to the recipients. So if you want to see them, you can actually uh, tune into the meeting next week on the 14th, or you can go online and look at them, or you can go into City Hall and look at the pictures. But it's really amazing what some of the people are doing to the outside of their homes. Let's talk about 3840 Oregon. We've talked about this property quite a bit, and now it looks like the weather may be changing the date of some things occurring. What's going on with that property? Well, this is the house that sits in the middle of the, or sits on the corner of the park. The city bought that with the intention of tearing it down. So we were going to do some fire training. Well, it turns out it was too warm and too windy, and they just said we it's not worth it. So they went inside the house to do some internal fire training, which was very helpful. They still haven't decided if they're going to burn it down on the 12th or not. A lot depends on the weather. If it still remains dry like this, I'm guessing probably not. So you might want to go online and look or call the fire department and ask if they're going to, but it doesn't look real promising because I don't think they're predicting any rain between now and then. Next in our update, a few numbers for you here. The single family conversions to rental what is the latest number count as you follow this throughout the year? Well, pretty much it goes back and forth. We get five that go to from single family to rental, and then we get five that go from rental back to single, single family. Well, this month, uh, five have gone from single family to rental, and three of those five are at Rosalyn Court. That's an apartment complex that people own in the southern part of the city. So that's where three of our five have come from. Next up, scattered site housing, a number of properties to touch on here as a lot of work is happening in the fall. The first is 4220 Nevada. It looks like trees are their center of attention right now. They are. That's the one where we did the lot split. We try to keep as many trees as we can, and especially if they're healthy. But when you're doing some major construction like that and you dig down, um, if you're digging into the roots, the tree probably isn't going to make it. So they're doing some tree removal now. And the demolition work is just about getting started. Once that's done, then we have divided those that lot into two lots. Once that's done, we will sell the lots then to uh, builders. Here's a new property to the list, 5410 Zealand. What is happening with this property? Well, as you know, we can't just take property. It has to be, a, a they call it an arm's length deal where the, the buyer and the seller are in conjunction with what they're going to pay for it. So staff has talked to the people at this residence. They're willing to sell. And now it'll just have to come back to uh, the EDA, the Economic Development Authority, which is basically the city council. And we'll look at that that, at the sales price and we'll either agree to that or disagree, whatever. And then if we do agree, we'll proceed on like we do all the other houses. This house is uh, is, uh, ready for demolition. So if we do buy the house, uh, it'll be through that same process of demolition. Don't know if anything's actually going to happen this year because it's starting to get late in the year. 
Speaking of demolition, let's move up to 54th and Virginia, a few properties there that are, I understand, ready for demolition. Well, the demolition is nearly completed. So they, they knock the houses down, but then there's a lot of stuff they have to remove. They also have to make sure that the lines going, water lines going into the houses are good and all that stuff. And so they're expecting to close on the 22nd of November on the lots. One of them has been sold to Exceptional Homes uh, Redeveloping. And so you'll see a nice two-story house going in there. Now, 5692 Boone Place have a nice picture here of that property. It is really coming along. It is. Hopefully, it was supposed to close on the 4th of October. I don't have an update whether or not it did, but I'm assuming that it did. It was done. A lot of times when you look at the house, it looks like it's not quite done, um, but they'll sell the house and close on it and then finish the stuff up. They're uh, contractually required to like put the lawn in, make sure the trees are in and whatever has to be done. Sometimes that gets done after the closing. So I'll check to make sure that it, that one actually did close. And if it did, we would have a nice new family in there pretty quick. Another picture here of a pair of properties, 7900 block of 50th Avenue. These properties look like they're moving through the process as well, very well. Well, the one at 7911, that one's going to close on the 11th of October. That's the internal one. And the external one, they're, they're uh, indicating they think it'll close on the 22nd of November. So one's closing in October, the end of October, one the latter part of November. So both those houses are, are going to be sold. I should tell people that a lot of times the houses get sold before they're done. And so when the when the developers give us a, a guideline of what they think the house will sell for, sometimes that's higher because uh, the house sells and then the owner that's buying it wants some special things put in, like maybe the basement finished or deck put on and the price goes up just a little bit for that. So anyway, we're getting lots of new houses that look really nice and they're selling quickly in new home. You bet. One more to talk about 8024 50th Avenue, back to demolition. This is ready for some takedown. It is. So we got the, some earnest money from Great Buy Homes. They're going to uh, close on the lot on the 22nd of November. In the meantime, we'll get that house up, finished tearing it down and get it all ready for the developer. Don't know whether the developer is going to start on it this year or not. Depends on, on the weather. Next up under community development, the business networking group. They're getting ready to meet in November and want to get this on your calendar early because I have a feeling, Mayor, a lot of people will want to attend this one because of something very cute. Well, this is really going to be a good one. It's going to be a can-do canines, and that's going to be on November 6th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Lots of places to park, so don't feel like you have to go looking for parking spaces. I'm guessing we'll get a little demonstration of the dogs. We'll get a tour of the facility if we want it. And then we'll have the normal business networking meeting. So two o'clock, it's free. It'll be at Candu Canines. The address of that is 9440 Science Center Drive. Very good. Building permits and inspections, a few more numbers to pass along. And it was a busy month. It seems like every month is busy. These guys are, I don't know how they get this much done. It's just magical to me. 245 permits were issued, and those were mostly for building permits, and they did 615 inspections, and those are uh, building inspections, mechanical inspections, and 151 code enforcement inspections. So mm -hmm. these guys are really, really busy. If you happen to get a little love note from them, um, they're going to come out and inspect for whatever reason. Yep, lots of activity there. And one other note, and we're going to actually pass along a little hiring information now and also a little bit later. This hiring information is about someone in the housing area. Tell us about this position. So one of our housing inspectors uh, took another job and we have to replace him, of course, or her. So you can go online and onto newhopemn.gov slash jobs for an application for a, I've got to read this, make sure I'm right, a housing code slash uh, code enforcement housing slash code enforcement inspector. Mm -hmm. So you have until the 14th of October to apply for this. And then after that, they'll be interviewing and they'll hire a new inspector. All right, there you see the website again to find out more information. To the police department we go. Let's touch on some of the activities there. The first is the Crime Prevention Fund golf event in the dark. I understand it went very well. <laughs> it did. So Officer Calio and the Crime Prevention Fund put on this tournament. They made $2,600. 
That money all goes back to uh, the Crime Prevention Fund, who then give it back to the police department on things that they might want, and uh, it's not necessarily the budget. So when they go out to the, the schools or the apartment complexes or the parks and cook hot dogs, this is where the money comes from. Next up on the police department, a few officers and folks from the police department made their way up to St. Cloud recently for some training. What was this special training they took place in? Well, one of my sergeants and a couple office staff went up to go to the BCA training, the Bureau of Cap, the Bureau of huh. Criminal Apprehension. That's that it. Correct? Thank you. That sounds my right. Just, my <laughs> mind just went dead. Sorry. But we get a lot of information on them, and these these folks that went up. We were trained on how to use that information and how to actually get and ask for the right information that we want. So very valuable for these guys to get trained. Next up, the Citizens Police Academy. Just to keep you up to date on the progress there, they had another get together and it looks like they did some very interesting discussions. What was that on? Well, this is the three cities, Robbinsdale, Crystal, and New Hope. And this academy is just for people who want to learn more about the police departments. And they go from city to city. Well, last week they were in New Hope, and what they did is they got some information on investigations. They got some information from the city attorney. Uh, they had some stuff on uh, the social, our embedded social worker, and our joint police partnership liaison. So just getting a good idea of what, what goes on in the police department and who does what. Final note on police, something about the color pink is going to be happening soon here. Mayor, inform us about the pink. There's something called the Pink Patch Project. And uh, when it first started, the money was all going to to research for uh, uh, breast, breast research. Well, now the money that they're making this time is going to a woman who works in the police department in Crystal. Mm -hmm. She's got breast cancer, and this money is going to help her ease that burden a little bit. So if you're interested in the pink patch, and they're about the size of the regular patches that the police wear, they've all got these pink patches sewn on now. Mm -hmm. If you want one for your sweatshirt, they're 10 bucks. You could just go into to, uh, the police department and get one. Fantastic. Let's go to Public Works. They're busy outside and inside. We'll take you to their building in just a second. But first, let's talk about what they're doing outside. What is the list of things they've been up to? Oh, these, these are the magic guys that do all kinds of stuff. So they've been street sweeping around these the water basins that go into the lakes. They don't want that stuff, obviously, to go into the lakes. Just a reminder of people, if you're raking your leaves, do not rake them into the street mm -hmm. because they all then end up going into the lakes and that causes just a terrible problem. Besides, it's against our ordinance to do that. Mm -hmm. So rake them up, put them in a bag, do something else with them, put them in your lawn disposal box, but don't put them in the street. So what else they're doing, they put some concrete curbs and sidewalks along 36th and Winnetka. This house that we bought in the park, we were able to dig up some of the trees and move the trees to some of our other park places. Mm -hmm. We've lost 86 trees at the golf course. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these trees are going to be moved to the golf course, just to, to add to that. Mm -hmm. So they finished installing the new gym equipment outside. They had poured um, four big Clabs of slabs of cement, and there's seven pieces of equipment on these four slabs of cement, and now they're starting to install them. I guess people are using them and they're really enjoying being outside in this wonderful weather exercising. You bet. Perfect time of the year for that. All right, now to inside of Public Works. They're doing some work on that big building. Here you'll see a few pictures of the progress. What is the latest, Mayor? It's gigantic. You know, when you go inside, you feel like a little tiny midget because it's so big. It has to be big because some of these trucks, like our big snow plows and the trucks that clean out the sewers are huge. And so they painted, they primed and painted the outside of the building. They've got pretty much the landscaping done. And so now the trucks will be moved in. They've got the lines painted on the floors. They're, they're identified which piece of equipment goes into which bay so they know exactly where the stuff is going. This is going to be a big help in the winter when it's cold and they've got to get those snow plows out. They won't be cold. They don't have to clean them off to get them out. And in case we have an emergency and we need like a, a water main break and we need that equipment out of there quickly, they could just get in, turn the key, drive it out. It's really a big, big asset for them and they're happy as larks. 
All right, we'll keep you up to date as it moves along. Final note from Public Works, back out to the streets we go. One project that is looking to get its final touches. Oh, gosh, 30, 31st of Louisiana. I actually drove over there, so I had to see what was going on. Apparently, when they put the, there's a final coat, and that's going on this week. So apparently, there's an undercoat, and then there's a top coat, and there's something. But finally, finally, that final coat will go on. Later this week, I'm going to drive over there and make sure it's actually there and people are <laughs> driving out. These people have really been, this is a joint project with Crystal and New Hope right. and no fault of Crystal, by the way, and no fault of ours. It's just when you do a total reconstruction like that, it takes forever. And you want to make sure that at least part of the road is open so people can get to the businesses and the houses that are being affected mm -hmm. by this. So mm -hmm. it just takes a little while longer and these people have been saints just getting through the whole summer with this it's going to be pretty when you're done yes one last thing about that when once sure. the, once they pour it uh they will come back and do some restoring of your boulevards so not everybody got new curbs a lot of them did but they'll be restoring those boulevards if you don't see anybody in a few weeks feel free to call public works and say oh remember me and they'll make sure that somebody gets out and we want your lawn to look as good as it did before we started Fantastic. Good to hear that one almost done. All right, let's move to Park and Rec. A lot happening here, some events that occurred and some that are coming up. First, those that occurred. First, something for the seniors in the community. They had a special luncheon. Well, the Senior Oktoberfest, they have it every year. Uh, they hold it out at Edinburgh, out in Brooklyn Park, and there were 130 participants that attended that. I don't know if they're drinking beer. I didn't ask, but I'm guessing maybe just a tiny bit might have float through. Now to the other end of the spectrum age-wise, we had some trick-or-treaters going around Civic Center Park recently. What was that big event? Well, Civic Center Park now has a really nice uh, trail that goes all around the park. They did something called Trick or Trot, and there were about 100 uh, kids registered for that. So they go from uh, station to station, getting little tidbits and candy. And when they've all got the candy, then they go and watch the movie, Hotel Transylvania and eat the candy and then they'll be up all night because of all the sugar they <laughs> ate. But the hundred kids that participated had a really good time and we had a real good night and a wonderful turnout for the movie. Fantastic. Glad to hear it. We mentioned earlier some of that exercise equipment outside and the public works folks working on it, but also Park and Rec plays a role in that too. They were very involved in this whole process. Well, so many of our things, more than one department yeah. is involved. And because the city works so well together, so obviously the public works guys are the ones that know how to put the equipment onto the concrete. And the park folks are the ones that know what piece of equipment goes where mm -hmm. and how it has to be faced and put on there and how much room you need around it. So it's a, just a nice collaboration between the two departments. And it's just another way of looking at how many things we do that involves more than one department. Back to the website, newhopemn.gov slash jobs. Here we've got some more employment opportunities, and this is something to have to do with ice and skating outside, Mayor. What's happening? Well, we have warming house attendants who will be uh, working in the, or in the warming houses by our outdoor uh, pond so that we've frozen over. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for attendants, and we're also going to be training them. So you can go onto that website and apply. I, I believe you have to be over 16. I'm not positive, but I, I don't think you can be under 16. So we're always looking for uh, people to go online and apply, and you should do that soon because I think that's going to be pretty well wrapping up, and they'll start the training real quick. Something else that happens in Park and Rec at this time of the year is the planting of trees, and they've got a lot of trees that need to be planted. What is the process here? Well, I found... I find out so much stuff when I'm doing the searching. So they have to make sure they know where the utility lines are. Mm -hmm. If they're underground, they don't want to be digging into utility lines or digging into a, a, a sewer line that they shouldn't be. So they have to go and identify where that is. And then once that, that's identified and people have picked up the tree that they want to put in their yard, uh, that fall planting will start now not only on the boulevards, but uh, when the tree was close to the street. But you might not have an actual boulevard. Mm -hmm. So that planning schedule is now being uh, settled in, and then they'll start the planning in the next week or two. 
just a reminder to people, once that tree is planted, you need to water it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's so dry out there. You know, just make sure it's watered because we don't want to have a dead tree come spring. Good advice. All right, let's go to the three park and rec facilities that get a lot of activity. The first is the golf course. Again, you see the picture behind the mayor there. And we had some golfers out there that usually have hockey sticks, but they switch them out for golf clubs. Well, they have a fundraiser for the Cooper Armstrong Girls Hockey Booster Club. And that was on Sunday. Uh, lots of people attended. I don't have any idea how much money they, they made, but I'm sure they used that money to help the kids that are skating these kids go through equipment a lot. And sometimes they can, the schools will buy it. And sometimes the booster club just helps them buy it. So that was, that was pretty busy weekend on that. So the leagues are done. So there'll be more time now for golfers during the day. If you're interested, be sure you make a tee time because you never know when it's full, but there is a little more time. Uh, it's hard to golf a little later in the evening. I, they don't think they're letting anybody out in carts after like six o'clock. Sure. But but you can still walk. And if you're really good, you can be done before the sun goes down and get started. <laughs> However, sometimes I look outside and there's still people golfing and it's getting pretty dark out there. Yeah, that ninth hole is a little tough to play in the dark. So watch <laughs> out is. when you get there. Watch out for the water on that last hole. Yeah. Another area that has some good open opportunities for people to get involved right now is the ice arena. And open skating is something that people can take advantage of on a regular basis. Well, Friday nights from 630 to 8 and Sundays from 4 to 6, you can skate there. Uh, if you don't have skates, you can rent skates. You can also bring your skates in to get them sharpened if you want. Besides that, we're also renting it out a lot. You know, now is the time where the girls and boys hockey teams are having their captain's practices. So these aren't official practices, but still they have to rent that, that ice time. The youth hockey is uh, doing their evaluation so they can get kids that want to play hockey into the right group so you don't have a a kid that's just learning how to skate with one that's been skating for five years. Mm -hmm. So they try to get that figured out. That's going on. We've got four men's groups that are still there. And of course, our elite group is still doing their tournaments there. And just when you thought that the activity was done at the aquatic park, not so fast. Something is coming out of the ground at the aquatic park. What is happening there? Yeah. You know, I kind of laugh about this because when, when you have something new, you, of course, acquire more stuff than you should. Either if you move to a new house or in my case, move to an apartment, I had way more stuff than I should have had. Well, here's this pool that opens and they thought they had plenty of storage. Guess what? Not true. So they built a shed and now they're putting the vinyl siding on the shed this week. And I think that's just been a be for the storage of some of the equipment that they didn't anticipate they would have. But um, that's what's happening at the pool. After it's pretty much closed up. They okay. tell me there's just a lot of stuff they have to do before it freezes and they can't do it too far ahead. So there'll be probably people working there till, till it freezes hard. Yep, very involved process. All right, final couple notes here. Get your calendars out. A lot to mark down of things coming up in the city. The first is the Tri-City Community Engagement Forum. When is that happening and what is that all about? Well, this is kind of exciting. This is about the fourth or fifth year maybe. It's on the 29th of October. It's from 6.30 to 8. It'll be at the Crystal Community Center. And what that is, is the three cities, Robbinsdale, Crystal, and New Hope, their police chiefs are there, or if the chief can't be there, like a sergeant or a captain will be there. And they are answering any question that you might have. So if you're wondering about crime, if you're wondering about uh, fraud, anything that has is police-related, this is a good time to come. It's usually pretty full, and there's a lot of good information. These three police officers sit at a, at a table, and they'll answer any questions you want. It's very friendly and very safe place to ask those questions you need. So 29th of October, put it on your calendar in Crystal. All right. And just a few days earlier, the city of New Hope is going to put out their best to encourage people to learn a little bit more about the city. What is this event called, and where does it take place? Well, it's called City Days. Now, this, this event has uh, morphed a few times. Right. We used, we used to have it inside at the old city hall, and then we moved it outside, and then it rained, and then we moved it inside. So we're back inside. So it's on the 
24th of October. It's from 5 to 7. It'll be inside. You can go uh, down the hall and stop at the different tables in front of the areas like Park and Rec, Community Development, the Police Department, and they'll be passing out information. A lot of times when you go into City Hall, you know you've got a concern, you just don't know where to go. Now you might be able to tell where to go. The other thing that's happening inside is the Human Rights Commission has bought Crayolas for all the kindergartners in New Hope, and the Crayolas are the color of skins, different color skins. It's called Colors of the World. The kids get a box of Crayolas and they're asked to draw a picture of, these are kindergartners, to draw a picture of themselves and their caregiver. The pictures are really adorable. Mm -hmm. So then the parents come in with the kids and the kids are so excited to show the parents their art on display. Mm -hmm. So parents can see all these, uh, these areas of City Hall, see the pictures, and then when they're done, from seven to eight, they can go outside and they'll have something called Trump Retreat. And so the police department is putting on something where lots of the police cars will be there with the trunks open. I'll be there. Some of the commissioners will be there. They can get lots of candy. They can play on some of the, the vehicles that are there. They can go inside the SWAT, the big SWAT vehicle that we have. So nice fun day at City Hall, October 24th. Very good. All right, let's keep moving earlier in October. The next date is October 12th. And this is a special date if you might have some stuff to get rid of. You partner with other cities for a special day up in Brooklyn Park. What is the big day? Well, this is called Special Materials Drop-Off. And they can go to 8300 Noble. And sometime between 8 and 3, I suggest you don't go at 8 o'clock because it's usually a long line. And you can drop off some of these special materials. Now, I think you're going to put something on the, uh, the screen that they can see what they can drop off. What's going? Some stuff is going to cost you money, like like um, electronics and maybe uh, mattresses and things like that. Mm -hmm. It tells you what you can drop off, what you can drop off for a little bit of money, and what you cannot drop off. So be sure you read that if you can. If you didn't, you can always go on to our website and look at special material drop off and see it there. But this is a good way to get rid of that stuff that's down in the basement that you really don't want anymore. All right, final date to mention is the end of October and not really an event itself, but that's the deadline for you taking some photos of New Hope. Tell us more about the photo contest once again. So In Focus is what it's called. We've had it for years. And uh, we have a new category this year called Events and Activities. The other categories are People, Places, Wildlife, and Nature. So you can submit one photo for each of those four categories if you'd like. You can go online. It tells you how to fill out the application, how to upload your pictures. I have no idea how to do that. I would need help, but that's okay. If you don't know how to do it and you need help, you can always bring your pictures or your camera into City Hall. Somebody there will help you upload that if you want to submit pictures and you just can't figure out how to do it online. Because mm -hmm. some of us people can't figure that out. <laughs> and, I, and I understand that. So you have until the 31st of October. And once they're all in, then the public will have a chance to view them and vote on them. So those pictures will be on the screens at City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, they might be on a board. I'm not sure they're going to put them on boards or just on the screen. You can also go online and vote. You can go online and see these pictures. Uh, you have to either live or work in New Hope, and all of the pictures must be taken in New Hope. So whatever you want to do, but you have until the 31st of October to do it. Very good. All right. And there you see the city's website, newhopemn.gov. And again, slash photos, slash jobs, all sorts of slashes there to find information or just search it up in the top and stick with us. We've got a calendar of events that are coming up in the city. They just might want to additionally put on your calendar. Mayor, thanks for your time again this week. We'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Thanks, Dave. See you then. Bye-bye.
For more city stories, check out ccxmedia.org or find us on social media.